जिघर घरान मुकुंद पाहत लजिये मोर धन माधोक्षज So now we will discuss uh, this shloka, the meaning of this shloka. Here say Jihwe Kirtaya. What is Jihwa? Tan. Kirtaya means glorify, chant. So let us use our tongues to glorify Krishna, to chant the names of Krishna. Simple meaning. Jihwe Kirtaya. Keshavam Buraripum. Uh, yeah, so, Tata Hanier, we can, without number three, is blocking the view. Whomsoever is the owner can enter uh, the condition. Tata Hanier, without number three. Uh -huh. <coughs> okay. Great. Let us use our tongues to glorify Krishna, chant his names. Keshavam Bhararipam Cheto Bhaja. So Cheta is mind. Bhaja means let's worship him. Within our mind, let us worship that Supreme Lord who is Keshava. Keshava, Tara is Brahma, Isha is Shiva. Keshava means the master of Brahma and Shiva. That is Lord Vishnu. Okay. So Lord Krishna. Mukunda. Muraripum. The Lord is also called Muraripu or Murari because he has killed a demon named Mura. You know Murasur? So once there was a great demon named Narakasur. And this Narakasur has uh, uh, you can come forward, please. There are many devotees who are behind the all his back. So this Narakasur was tormenting so many uh, innocent people. Okay. So all the devotees and sages came to Lord Krishna and requested Krishna. Can you please kill this Narakasur? Then Krishna called Garuda. So Garuda came. Krishna climbed on the back of Garuda. Krishna also took Satya Bhama along with him. So Krishna and Satya Bhama on the back of Garuda went to Pragyotishpur to kill Narakasa. At the entrance of this Pragyotishpur uh, big fort, there is Varasa. So Krishna first killed him. Then he killed Narakasa. So Krishna, who killed Varasa, is called Murari also called Murari Kum. So, within our mind, let us meditate on that uh, killer of Murari Kum. Clear? Jehive Kirtaya. With the tongue, let's glorify the Lord. Murari Kum Cheto Bhaja. Within our minds, let's meditate on him. Worship him. Shri Dharam Pani Dvanda Samar Chaya. So, first line is clear. Jehive Kirtaya Keshavam Murari Kum Cheto Bhaja Shri Dharam Shri Dhara means one who, Shri means Lakshmi Devi. Shri Dhara means one who holds Lakshmi on his chest. That's the place that Lord Narayana gives to Mother Lakshmi okay, in her, his heart. So, Pani Dvandvasa Marchaya, with two hands, let us do Archana, let us worship that Lord who is Shri Dhara. Then, Samarchaya Achyuta Katha. Srotta Dvayatvam Shrunum. With two ears, let us hear the beautiful, sweet pastimes of Krishna. Srotta Dvayatvam Shrunum. Krishnam Lokaya Lojana Dvaya Hare Gachandrayam Malayam. With our two eyes, let us see this beautiful form of Lord Krishna. Gachandrayam Malayam. With our two legs, let's walk to the holy places where Krishna has performed his pastimes. Let us walk towards uh, Krishna's temples. That's the right utility, utility of legs. Then, With our nostrils, let's try to smell the Tulasi leaves, the fragrance coming from the Tulasi leaves of the Krishna's university. That's the right utility of nostrils. Let us use our heads to bow down in front of Krishna. So 
So this is how we have to engage all our senses. Hands in serving Krishna, legs in going to Krishna's temple, ears in hearing about Krishna, nostrils in smelling flowers offered to Krishna, tulsi offered to Krishna, eyes in seeing the beautiful form of Krishna. So if we engage all our senses in this way, in Krishna conscious activities, naturally we develop love for Krishna. We become Krishna conscious. You want to become Krishna conscious? How many of you become close? How many of you want to become close to Krishna? <laughs> so everyone unanimously agreed that we have to become Krishna conscious. This is a simple way of becoming Krishna conscious. All simple activities anyone can do, even kids can do. Right? So not complicated activities. Next. Ultimately, all these activities are meant to be done to do what? To always remember Krishna. To always think of Krishna. So, always remembering Krishna, never forgetting Krishna is the, is the purpose of uh, our spiritual life. Is the purpose of all our spiritual activities. Therefore, all our activities should lead to remembrance of Krishna and Kuroshakaralva speaks about remembrance of Krishna in this next sloka. Okay. Recitation of scriptural shlokas will be like Aranya Rodana if you don't remember Krishna. You know what is Aranya Rodana? Aranya means forest. Rodana means train. Aranya Rodana means somehow when someone is traveling and he is trapped in a forest, right? He is just caught up in a forest and uh, he did not know the way to come out. What he will do? He will cry. Okay? Any tiger can come and catch him, any lion can come and catch him, any uh, big uh, python can come and swallow him, any snake can come and bite him, fox can come and bite him. So he's in constant fear. Uh, what's going to happen next is unknown. So he's in constant fear, so he will cry. So our recitation of scriptures is like crying in forest if you don't remember Krishna. Right? They're making loud sound. Uh, reciting so many <laughs> slokas and mantras, but there is no remembrance of Krishna. What's the point? That's the point here. Second, Veda Vratanya Maham, Veda Scheta Phalan. Veda Vratas means there are so many Vratas. You don't understand Vratas, right? Described in the Vedas. People will follow this Vratas. In, as a part of their Vrata, they may fast for 10 days, 20 days. Okay? They may follow different protocols. They may uh, go around temple where one or eight times this and that. Okay, so many things people will do as a part of Vratas. But if but if the performance of Vrata is without remembering Krishna, remembering God, that execution of Vrata is just like an exercise to reduce bodily fat. 
<laughs> be in the chain of a land. So fasting, what will happen? Fat will be reduced. When doing so much parikrama, fat will be reduced. That's all will happen. You do not remember Krishna. <laughs> okay. You got the second point? Third point. Purta vidhayaha sarvam hudam bhasmani. Purta vidhayaha means there are so many vidhis in different scriptures. Other rituals. So performing all the rituals and dignas, homas, etc., it's like pouring ghee into ashes. When you have a sacrificial fire litter, chanting of mantras, then with the fire you are pouring ghee, it is called sacrifice. But sacrifice is over, only ash is there. You take 100 kilos of organic ghee and then pour in it, pour in the ash, and we call it sacrifice. Right? So our following of different rituals without remembering Krishna is like offering oblations into ashes. Fine? Clear? So remembrance of Krishna is Krishna. One more point. Tirthana. Tirtha means a holy place. Our visiting of different holy places, going for pilgrimage, is just like Vajasnana. You understand Vajasnana? An elephant will enter a lake, takes bath, comes out of the lake and pours dirt on its body. What's the point of taking bath? So our entering holy places and taking bath in holy rivers is just like elephant bath if you don't remember Krishna. Dvandvam bhavaruha samsrutim vijayate devasanarayana If you don't remember the divine lotus feet of Lord Narayana, so whatever we do as a part of our the pious uh, practices is just waste of time. So remembrance of Krishna is the most important thing. Is it clear? So in the previous sloka, uh, the author Kulashe Karanavar said that this is how you have to utilize all your senses in Krishna seva. And in this sloka, he is emphasizing on remembering the Lord. Not just mechanically doing some pious activities, but remember the Supreme Lord. Clear? Simple message. So, some more. Uh, I am going to skip some because within one hour we can't cover everything. And let's recite this sloka. Nathe Thatari Bhogi Bhoga Shajane Narayade Madhave Nathe Thatari Bhogi Bhoga Shajane Narayade Madhave Nathe Thatari Your bed. Anyone sleep on snakes here? Anyone? Sleep on snakes? 
If someone is claiming that I am God, you worship me, you ask him, can you sleep on snake? <laughs> can you sleep on a python? You ask them. <laughs> if they say yes, and if they show it also, then you can consider. <laughs> okay. But otherwise, no one can sleep on snake bed. If he happens to sleep on sleep on snake bed, don't accept him as God, by the way. <laughs> First, we uh, put a second test. Can you dance on snake suits? <laughs> I'll ask him next. <laughs> so a snake is trying to bite you, you should start dancing rhythmically on the snake suits without sleeping, falling. So Krishna did that. So while Lord Vishnu is sleeping on snake bed, uh, a thousand headed snake, uh, Lord Krishna is dancing on the hooks of Kaliya snake. Right? So becoming God is not possible. No one can become God. God is God always. Right? No one can become God. So the Lord is Bhoki Bhoka Shagini. Narayane Madhave. Is Narayana? Is Madhava, husband of Lakshmi Devi? Then Deve Devaki Nandane Suravare Chakrayu Desangeli. Deve is the Supreme Lord. Devaki Nandane. Although he is the Supreme Lord, he appears as son of Devaki. Suravare. He is the best of all devatas and he is the deva of, of all devatas. Right? Chakrayu Desangeli. He has Sangha Dhanva. He is Chakrayuda. Sudarshan Chakra is his Ayuda. Right? Next. Leela Sesha Jagat Prapancha Jathare Vishveshare Sridhare Leela Sesha He has unlimited Leelas because he has unlimited incarnations called Leela Vataras. In all these unlimited incarnations he performs so many Leelas. Unlimited Leelas as Rama, Krishna, Varaha, Narasimha, Vamana, Matsya, Orma. So many others he has. So many Leelas he has. Leela Sesha Jagat Prapancha Jatare. Enter Prapancha, all Jagat is within his Jatara, within his belly. When Mahavishnu breathes out, when he exhales, millions of universes, Brahmandas come out. Right? Ananta Koti Brahmandas come out of his bodily force. Right? So next day he is Jagat Prapancha Jatare. One day Krishna ate that. Then all the friends of Krishna went and complained to Mother Yashoda. Yashoda Masa, Krishna is eating that. Yashoda became very anxious. She came to Krishna and she said, Krishna, I have heard a complaint from your brother and your friends. But they have eaten that. Open your mouth. So Krishna opened his mouth. Mother Yashoda has seen entire universe within his belly. Leela se yesha jagatra pancha jathare. Entire universe is there within the belly of the Lord. Vishveshvare Shri Thare. Vishwa Ishwara is the real boss, real master, real controller of the entire Vishwa. Shri Thare. He is holding Shri on his chest. Right? Next. Uh, this is done. Oh, this is also done. Oh my God. Same picture. Govinde Kuru Chitta Vritti Vachalam. Yes, Oh, Govinda, Kuru Chitta Vrittim Achala, let our minds focus on uh, your glories always. Govinda, Kuru Chitta Vrittim Achala, Kanyesh to Kimvartanehi, please enable us to focus our minds, focus our hearts on your glories, on you. My mind has a tendency to think of hundred different things, but by your blessings, with your grace, I will be able to focus on your holy name nicely, your glorious nicely. So like that, we need to offer prayers to the Lord uh, for our increased Krishna consciousness. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Ananyas Chinta Yantomam Yejana Paripasate Yejana Paripasate Yesham Nitya Vyuktana Yesham Nitya Vyuktana Yoga Kshemam Whoever uh, does Pari Upasana, perfect worship of me, without thinking anything else. For such people, I take care of their yoga and kshiyam. Yoga kshiyam vahamiham means whatever they need, I will supply. Whatever they have, I will present. Okay. 
when will that happen when we completely depend on krishna without deviating our minds towards anything else govinde guru chitta vritti machala let uh, my chitta vritti be achala then only it happens so krishna said yoga kshemam bhagyaham i will take care of the burden of responsibility of my devotee's maintenance krishna said there is one devotee named arjuna acharya you know him how many of you know arjuna acharya okay hardly three four hands let me tell the story there is a devotee named arjuna acharya he is a great commentator on bhagavad gita also he is writing explanation on bhagavad gita so when he was writing Uh, an explanation of this particular shloka ananya chintam tamam shloka that we just decided there he came to the last thing yoga kshemam vahami aham aham means me i will personally vahami carry vahami means to carry uh, i will personally carry the responsibility of my devotees or should krishna carry the responsibility of maintaining his devotees it's too much so he did not like that thing not that he doesn't have trust in krishna's words he just felt a little uncomfortable why should krishna care he just tried to that line okay so while thinking of this shloka a long time passed generally arjuna acharya will go out to beg for beg some food and come back uh, to his home and then take his lunch right he and his wife will take his lunch that day because he was thinking about this shloka he was little delayed he did not go out for wedding fast so that day he went uh, late but at the time he went to bed all the people have already eaten they washed their vessels also they were sleeping he did not get any moksha that day and his wife is waiting for some time when will my husband come when will i cook when will i feed him when will i eat so she was waiting meanwhile two little boys came one boy pale complexion another boy dark complexion Two little boys came. They were carrying, okay. They were carrying some. You know, there is some balance. There is a bamboo stick. Uh, there are two uh, baskets uh, hanging from the bamboo stick. I don't know what is that called in this language, okay. So these two little boys were carrying that so much saman, okay. So much grocery, fruits and vegetables and grains. They were just carrying. So they brought all of them to Arjuna Chaya's wife and offered them. then she opened the door and found this little boy is carrying so much burden and asked them my dear boys uh, what is this why did you get all this who has sent you then the boys introduced themselves we are the disciples of arjuna acharya your husband he has given this load to us and we are carrying this to your home so please accept them please accept everything we need to go back immediately uh, with this empty baskets Uh, please don't delay otherwise your husband will punish us so arjuna ji has said heard this everything patiently with a smile but as soon as she heard the last statement her expression changed what was the last statement uh, your husband will punish us my husband will punish you your little boy is so sweet so cute <laughs> why would my husband punish you my husband is not so strict he is not so cruel uh, don't speak all this lies Then the boys turned their backs and then showed. <laughs> okay, there were some marks uh, of beating. Uh, he has. Uh, they were beaten up. So seeing that, Arjuna Chera's wife became surprised. He said, "My husband punished me in this way." Yes, of course. The boy said, especially the black boy was more excited. He <laughs> 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 had complained. Your husband only punished me like this. So he took the. Child inside, and then applied some sandalwood paste on the bag. Okay, don't worry, it will, it will be all right in some time. So please go. So she accepted the grocery. She started cooking also, and she started eating also. <laughs> <laughs> right. Meanwhile, our Ajay Chere came back home without uh, any food in hand, and he saw her. Very deep, right? Really, her her habit is to feed her husband nicely, lovingly, and then she would eat. That day she was not bothered when she was eating, and she was not even welcoming the husband. Also, she was totally indifferent, right? Arjuna Chari was surprised. He had two questions, my dear wife. Uh, how are you eating, and where are these? Uh, how did you get all these ingredients? 
to cook this food second point second question why you are so indifferent why your behavior is little different today then she with a great uh, disgusting expression she said that uh, i didn't like your activity of uh, punishing some little boys it's not appropriate in your part me i punish yes your disciples your students have brought all this grocery here all the fruits and this uh, vegetables and grains they have brought you are engaging them in some heavy duty service uh, beyond their ability and you are punishing them also what is going on i don't like this then i think there was totally surprised i never had sent any of my disciples to bring all this grocery and i was personally going and begging and i never punished them definitely so who told all this so how are the boys looking like then yeah, there were little boys one was black one was a little whitish huh? he is fair so then i think they had it out he would have entered his room opened the commentary okay he opened the commentary on uh, yoga kshema mahamiham shloka he just typed up the lines right so that striking is gone the lines manifested again then arjuna charya understood he went back and said you are so glorious my dear why you got the just of krishna and balram i did not get Oh. Oh. So, I was so unfortunate that I did not, I did not keep full trust in the words of uh, uh, Krishna. I doubted his words, Yoga Kshema Mahamyam. So to prove that his words are true, whatever he said in Bhagavad Gita is true, he uh, personally brought all these ingredients for you, and he gave you darshan. He did not give you darshan. So Arjuna Charya continued. his commentary glorifying krishna as a person who carries the burden of the responsibility of his devotees oh. right. so when does this happen it happens when we always think of krishna when will we be able to think of krishna if we pray to krishna like this govinde kuru chitta vritti vachalam anya istuti vartane ananyas chintayanto ma if you don't Hello, our mind to get distracted or deviated by any materialistic thoughts, material desires, and if we focus only on Krishna, Krishna will accept our responsibility, right? He will preserve whatever we have and he will supply whatever uh, we lack. So, what does that mean? I don't have a car. Krishna will supply a car to me. I don't have a bungalow. Will Krishna supply bungalow? <laughs> or, uh, or I have. some one crore bank balance will krishna present it one crore will not it i will not be bankrupt in it that's not the meaning of this book by the way so krishna will bless us not with material prosperity the the meaning of this shloka is not that krishna will give material prosperity there are several devotees from whom krishna has taken away everything there are several devotees to whom krishna has given everything in terms of external prosperity like you see sudama you know sudama right i not made a little sudama story you have to discuss with him all <laughs> so sudama was so poor so poverty stricken that he did not have proper dhoti to wear also his dhoti has 100 knots so he cannot even have a third a needle and thread to the stitch he has a knot right and uh, he didn't have sufficient cloth to cover his body he did not have sufficient grains to fill his belly and he struggling like that so to cut the long story short krishna has given opulence like indra he has given a great palace all of you know that story on the other hand there is another devotee named bali maharaj you know bali maharaj krishna went to him and said i just want three uh, steps of land krishna went in the form of a small child vamana boy brahmana boy And said, "I just want three steps of land." Well, Umar said, "Three steps of land." Yes, three steps of land only, according to the measurement of my feet. <laughs> Your feet? They're so small, right? I can give you three words. Why are you asking three steps? Once you take charity from me, you need not take charity from anyone for the next ten lifetimes. So, how can you ask uh, such a meager charity from me? It's an insult to my part to give that kind of meager charity. Now come to king. This is very chakravarti. Okay, so ask something more. Then we are going to give a big seminar on principles of satisfaction. <laughs> okay, principles of satisfaction. 
and he said, okay, fine, take, take whatever you want. <laughs> then he gave charity. Then Varamanadev expanded his body, gigantic body. In, in uh, Kanchipuram, there is one deity called uh, Olaganda Perumal, right? Trikrama Perumal. So, so the deity is so huge, you have to enter the Garbhar and see like this, right? So then you will see the face of the Lord. So with two steps, the Lord has covered uh, the entire universe. With one step, entire earth. With another step, entire sky. And with his body, expanded body, he covered the entire space, outer space. So when he asked, where is the third step? <laughs> you have occupied all the three words and asking me third step? My dear Bali Maharaj, you have given me a check that got bounced. <laughs> <laughs> you did not have sufficient bank balance in your account. You are over promising and under delivering. Okay. So you have promised three steps and you have boasted, take more than three steps, you don't have even two steps also. Okay. Where should I put the third step? So in this way with cheating, he has Lord has taken away everything from Bari Maharaj. So in Bari Maharaj's story, the Lord has taken away everything. In Sudama's story, the Lord has given everything, although he did not want it. So his behavior, his treatment of these two devotees is totally opposite, but in fact it is same. Why? The Lord does not like pride in the heart of his devotees. Okay? So Sudama, although he is so renounced, so detached, he has one little problem in the mind. He is so proud of his detachment. He is attached to his detachment. Right? <laughs> He is so, uh, not so, little bit. He is a little bit puffed up of his renunciation. I am so renounced, I don't need anything. I don't even beg also. Brahmanas can beg to fill their bellies. But he is not even begging also. He is starving like that. So he is attached to his detachment. The Lord has given him so much uh, money and wealth and made him humble. Right? Someone will say, I will not accept any sweets, I will not accept any, uh, any uh, tasty items. I will just take non spicy things. <laughs> right? You give him with peace and humble him. <laughs> right? The Lord has given so much opulence to Sudama and humbled him. And whatever is little pride that is unfavorable to his bhakti, the Lord has removed it by giving him wealth. On the other hand, Bali Maharaj had great pride. Not great, but little bit of pride. That he is a very great charitable person. I can give any amount of charity to anyone who comes to me. So Bali Maharaj had this kind of pride. So the Lord humbled him by proving that you cannot even give three steps of charity. You are so proud that uh, you are a great charitable person, Mahadhata, uh, but uh, you could not even offer me three steps of that. You have to give, give, your, give, your, give your head for your third step. So uh, when Krishna said Yoga Kshema Mahamyaha, what does that mean? It only means that uh, Krishna will give whatever is favorable to our bhakti and will take away whatever is unfavorable to bhakti. Not that he will give material prosperity. I will preserve whatever you have, I will supply whatever you lack. That means I will supply whatever you lack in your advancement in bhakti and I will preserve whatever you have in advancing in bhakti. If something that you have is not favorable for your spiritual advancement, I will take it away. Something that you don't have but you need it for your spiritual advancement, I will give you. For advancing spiritually, some people may need poverty. Krishna will give poverty. Take this poverty. <laughs> right? I accept this poverty as my gift. So that's what he has given to Bali Maharaj. So people will become popular by becoming rich. But Bali Maharaj became popular by becoming poor. Okay. That's how Krishna will help us. Yoga Kshema Mahameha we have to understand in the right context. And that Krishna will do. Krishna will personally intervene into our lives and do all these things provided we remember him with the dedication. Anandyasantayam Prama. This is the prayer for that. Go vinde kuru chitta vritti matala anjyastu kim vartanayi. Let me not focus on other things. This is another shloka. Even longer shloka. We have been deciding many long shlokas, is one more long shloka. So you should tell me when to stop. Madraksham Shida Punyan 
क्षणमी भक्ति तव चरितुवन पति चेत क्षीण पुण्य क्षण भक्ति इन शॉर्ट दीनिंग ऑफ दिस वन लाइन इज बट यर लॉर्ड Let me not even glance upon people who lack piety, who are very simple in their in their character. So please do not let me even glance at those uh, people who whose pious credits are so depleted that they have no devotion to your lotus feet. If you don't have devotion to the lotus feet of the Lord, our company is not worth seeking by great source. Right? That's what's going on. Second, my sroshan shravya vandham. My dear Lord, please let me not get distracted from listening the worthy narrations of your divine self. You uh, are so glorious. Your name, Rupa, Guna, Lila. Your name, fame, pastimes, and activities are so glorious. Let me be interested only in hearing your topics. Let me not get distracted from Hari Katha. Okay, let me not. Get into the company of materialistic people. Let me not get distracted from Hari Katha. Two points. Third point. O Madhava, Ma Smarsham Madhava, Api Bhuva Na Pratyeche Tasa Patnu Bhana. O Madhava, O Lord of the Universe, let me pay no attention to those who avoid thinking of you. If someone is not thinking of you, I don't want to be with that person. Fourth point. Let me never. Be unable to serve you in some material way. That basically means let me always be eager to serve you in some material way. Let me always associate with your devotees. Let me always hear your Hari Katha. Okay. Let me always think of you. This is the prayer of a devotee. Then uh, I will go to other shlokas. Ah, this is a full shloka. Nama minara yana pada panta jam. नमायण पाद पंकज Self-understood. 
श्रीनाथ नारायण वासुदेव श्रीनाथ नारायण वासुदेव श्री कृष्ण भक्त प्रिय चक्र पाणी श्री कृष्ण भक्त प्रिय चक्र पाणी श्री पद्मनाभाचित कैटभारे श्री पद्मनाभाचित कैटभारे श्री राम पद्माक्ष हरे मुरारे श्री राम पद्माक्ष हरे मुरारे यू नो द मीनिंग Simple names of the Lord. One more. Ananta vai kuntha mukunda Krishna. Ananta vai kuntha mukunda Krishna. Govinda damo dar madhaviti. Govinda damo dar madhaviti. Bhaktum samarthu bina bhakti kashit. Bhaktum samarthu bina bhakti kashit. Ahojana na yasana bhi mukhyam. Ahojana na yasana bhi mukhyam. अनंत वैकुंठ मुकुंद कृष्ण ओ अनंत अनलिमिटेड लॉर्ड वैकुंठ लॉर्ड ऑफ वैकुंठ वैकुंठ मींस अ प्लेस व्हिच इज डिवाइड ऑफ मिसरीज कुंठ मींस मिसरी डिफिकल्टी वैकुंठ मींस अ प्लेस दैट हैज नो डिफिकल्टीज राइट मुकुंद ऑन हू गिव्स लिबरेशन कृष्ण द ऑल अट्रैक्टिव पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड है गोविंद ऑन हू गिव्स प्लेजर टू काउस एंड सेंसेस दामोदर ऑन हू बिल इज बॉन्ड बाय मदर यशोदा द स्ट्रोक ऑफ लव सी द पिक्चर देयर दैट इज दामोदर ओके then madha is the husband of uh, lakshmi vaktu samartho pi na vakti kashchit although people can address you in this way still they remain silent anyone can say mohunda damodara krishna narayana madhusudana trikrama vamana anybody can say even here who cannot say right but still they keep silent right so that's the fortune that's his fortune ahojana nam yasana vimukyam just see how Eager, uh, they are for their own destruction, right? So they are eager for their own destruction if they don't chant the holy names of Krishna. Another beautiful story. Bhakta paaya bhujanga jarude mani trayi lokya raksha mani. Bhakta paaya bhujanga jarude mani trayi lokya raksha mani. Bhakta paaya bhujanga jarude mani. ोचन चातकामुदी सौंदर्य गोल्ड माउंटेन एंड अ ब्लू स्टोन देयर ब्लू मणि देयर 
तो भक्तापाय भुजांग गारुडमणि त्रैलोक्य रक्षामणि सो ही विल प्रोटेक्ट ऑल द डिवोटीज इन ऑल द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स दे आर ड्रोनिंग इन द ओशन ऑफ मटेरियल एक्सिस्टेंस दे आर बी कम एंड हिट देम लाइक दिस राइट गोपी लोचन चातकां बुधमणि सौंदर्य भुद्रामणि सौंदर्य भुद्रामणि so the lord is the uh, abode of all beauties there is unlimited beauty in the material world there is much more beauty in the spiritual world the personification of all that beauty the source of all that beauty the collection of all that beauty is krishna therefore he is called sarva saundarya sangraham right so gopi lochana chataka budavadi sam the riya mudra badi whenever the gopis of vrindavan come in front of krishna they don't blink their eyes they just open their eyes and right? like they look at krishna gopi lochana chataka ambuda mani ambuda is what ambu means water ambuda means that which carries water that is cloud so the clouds carry water rain water and the chataka birds they are accustomed to drink only rain water they don't drink bisteri water <laughs> okay they don't drink even water from you know kaveri river here okay they don't drink water from yamuna and ganga also they don't drink water from any uh, lake they drink water only uh, from the clouds right they want that 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 uh, only that water similarly the gopis of vrindavan they can't relish they can't get excited by seeing any form of krishna The Lord has Matsya form, Kurma form, Varana form, Vamana form, Vishnu form, Narayan, Vasudeva, Sankarshna, Pratima, Anirudha, Chaturvedi have forms. He has unlimited forms, right? But and even Krishna has uh, Dwaraka form and Mathura form and the Vrindavan form. What is the difference? In Vrindavan, Krishna has a simple turban, and in Dwaraka, Krishna has a big crown. In Vrindavan, Krishna is surrounded by monkeys. And uh, cows and bulls and calves and uh, parrots and peacocks, but in Dwaraka, Krishna is surrounded by chariots, uh, big horses and elephants. Right? So the attire of Krishna is different there. In Vrindavan, Krishna doesn't even wear shoes also. In Dwaraka, Krishna is very royal. He sits on thrones. So in Dwaraka, Krishna sits on a big throne, and in Vrindavan, Krishna sits on Govardhan Shilas. Then he will go and sit on some grass fields. Or he will go and sit on some stone of Govardhan. So simplicity and innocence are the features of Krishna's form in Vrindavan. But majesty, grandeur, and opulence are the features of Krishna's form in Dwaraka or Vaikuntha. So the gopis of Vrindavan are excited only to see Krishna's form in Vrindavan alone. When once the gopis met Krishna in Kurukshetra. This I Krishna. Who is this? Is this Krishna only? Uh, uh, Krishna only. But what is this mukut? What is this big crown, dazzling crown on his head? We are accustomed to seeing him with a turban or with a small turban as he is entering the Vrindavan forest. He is wearing a simple peacock feather. But what is this big crown here? We are seeing him walking barefoot on the land of Vrindavan. He is sitting on a big chariot. All the gopis were in separation from Krishna by meeting Krishna. While seeing Krishna, can you see? Can you miss a person while being right in front of him? The gopis are missing Krishna so much while being in front of Krishna. With their hearts, they were pulling the chariot of Krishna towards Vrindavan, and that is Jagannath Ratha. Right? So, gopi lochana chata kam puta mani. Just like chata ka birds always look for water from the clouds. Similarly, the gopis of Vrindavan always look for to see Krishna. Simple, innocent attire as a cowhead boy in Vrindavan only. They are not excited with any other form. Okay. So third, yeah. Kanta amani rukmini ghana kucha tum vai ka bhusha mani. Kanta amani is the best of all queens of Krishna. Who is that? Rukmini. Her she herself is a mani. She is Kanta amani and she is Rukmini. And she is wearing Krishna as a mani hanging from her neck, right? So, Rukmini, Ghana Kucha, Dwandvai ka Bhusha mani. Rukmini keeps Krishna 
so close to her hand that she waves Krishna like an ornament, like a like a jeweled ornament in her neck. And so Vrindavan flower is there in the second line. Dwarka flower is there in the third line. Shreyo Deva Shikha Vadir Dishatuno Gopala Chuda Vadi. Let the Supreme Krishna, who is the crest jewel of all Gopalas, uh, be an object of my prayer. Let him shower his grace upon me. Shreyo Deva Shikha Vadi. May he cause auspiciousness to all of us. This is the prayer. Clear? Understood? We'll go ahead. We can speak so many stories in connection to this slogans, but we move. <laughs> this is about Krishna Swayini. Very beautiful shloka. In the previous shloka, we have seen eight manis. In this shloka, we will see eight mantras. Shetra Chedai Kamantram Sakalam Upanishad Vakyasam Pujya Mantram Shatru Chedai Kamantra Sakala Upanishad Vakyasam Pujya Mantra Shatru Chedai Kamantra Sakala Upanishad Vakyasam Pujya Mantra Samsara Chedai Mantra Samuchita Tamasaha Samdhariyana Mantra Samsara Chedai Mantra Samuchita Tamasaha Samsaro Cheda Mantram Samuchita Tamasaha Sangha Niriyana Mantram Samsaro Cheda Mantram Samuchita Tamasaha Sangha Niriyana Mantram Sarvai Shwariyaika Mantram Vyasana Bhujaga Sandashta Sangha Niriyana Mantram Sarvai Shwariyaika Mantram Vyasana Bhujaga Sandashta Sangha Sarvaishwaryaika mantram, Vyasana bhujaya sandashta sandra na mantram. Sarvaishwaryaika mantram, Vyasana bhujaya sandashta sandra na mantram. Jitre Sri Krishna mantram, Japa Japa Satatam, Janma Sakalya mantram. Jitre Sri Krishna mantram, Japa Japa Satatam, Janma Sakalya mantram. Shatruchedaika mantra means there are so many shatrus. We may consider so many people as shatrus. He is my enemy, she is my enemy. Uh, we may consider like that, but the real enemies are not outside, they are inside. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsara, Lust, Envy, Pride, Greed, these are our real enemies. By chanting the holy names of Krishna, these enemies are destroyed. Shatra Chedai Kamantra. Next. Sakala Upanishad Vakyasam Urja Mantra. All the Upanishads and all the Shastras are repeatedly recommending that we all chant Krishna Mantra. All the Upanishad uh, statements are worshipping this Krishna Mantra. Sakala Upanishad Vakyasam Urja Mantra. Krishna Mantra is worshipped by Upanishad statements. Basically, all the scriptures are recommending that we chant Krishna's name. Okay? <coughs> Next. Samsaro Cheda Mantram. We are chanting the holy name of Krishna. The Samsara Tapatraya are completely vanquished. Samsara basically means the repeated cycle of birth and death in this world. That repeated cycle of birth and death is terminated by chanting Krishna Mantra. Samsaro Cheda Mantram. Samuchita Tamasaha Sambhaniriyana Mantra. By chanting Krishna Mantra, our absorption and, and entanglement in this material world is completely terminated. Right? Samuchita Tamasaha Sambhaniriyana Mantra. We can retire. We can retire from this uh, material entanglement by chanting Krishna Mantra. How many of you want to retire from material entanglement? How many of you want to untangle yourself from this entanglement? Right? <laughs> <laughs> we have to chant Hare Krishna. Simple. Mantra. Means this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra can give us all Aishwaryas. How many of you want Aishwarya? Hey, no one wants. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad. <laughs> 
you have your divine feet that are like tender lotuses, right? So may I always meditate on your divine lotus feet. My manasa, uh, my mind is like Raja Hamsa, a royal swan, a regal swan. Raja Hamsa means regal swan. Just like regal swans swim in waters of a lake that are filled with lotuses, right? Similarly, let my mind uh, swim in the waters of Krishna that uh, who has divine lotus-like feet, right? So let my mind, let my uh, swan like mind enter into, enter amidst the lotus stems of uh, your lotus feet. Prana prayana samaye kapamata At the time of death, my throat will be choked up and all this mucus, bile, and air uh, will not allow me to utter your holy name, may not allow me to think of you properly. So, at that time, how will I be able to chant your holy names when my throat is not helping me, when my body is not helping me? But now, I am in a sound uh, situation where I can easily uh, remember your lotus feet. Please take that, please. Okay. So, uh, proper when he is <coughs> commenting on. Uh, Isopanishad, there is one shloka, one mantra in Isopanishad that says that a devotee is offering prayer to the Lord, my dear Lord, please remember all the services that I have done to you uh, so that uh, you take me to your lotus feet at the time of my death. Okay, Devotee prays like that. Prabhupada writes in the purport, devotee did not pray like that. Okay, Krishna will immediately remember. If you don't remember Krishna, Krishna will force his remembrance upon you at the time of death. Krishna will arrange so many devotees who are coming with Vradangas and Kartas and chanting the holy names to send you back to God. Right? When you are at the deathbed. Okay? You don't have to specifically pray to Krishna, but out of humility, sometimes Krishna, sometimes a devotee prays to Krishna like that. So, point is, at the time of death, if you remember Krishna, we will reach Krishna. Where it's mentioned in the 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Antakale chamameva smaran muktva kalevaram yaha prayati samadhavam yati nasyatra samshayaha. One who remembers me at the time of death will definitely reach me. And this is the prayer Krishna, let me remember you at the time of my death. Or whenever I remember you, let that be my moment of death. Okay? Because at the time of death, I am not sure whether I will be able to remember you. Okay? But don't worry, Krishna will help us remember. Okay. Thank you. Anybody? Any other questions or comments? No questions should I answer. We had so many questions. We had to forcefully stop the session. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am. Yes. Krishna Prabhu, please ask about the basis of scientific awareness of class and the series of classes that you have been doing for congregation. Um, we discussed how Krishna will give whatever is favorable and the day of day, whatever is unfavorable for Bhakti. Is that true only for surrendered souls? If not, then how do we understand the context of everything that happens in day to day lives in which we struggle to focus our minds? Uh, for surrendered souls, Krishna need not do that. For others, Krishna have to do that. Right? Krishna taking away everything. So, Prabhupada writes in one, one place. He says, uh, in this shloka, Yasya hamanu grihnanu harishyeta dhanam chanai. So, I will gradually take away all the wealth of my devotee. And because the wealth is gone, all the relatives and friends who are with him because of that wealth will also leave him that he has no other option but to surrender to me. Okay? So Krishna will take away certain uh, possessions of a devotee if the devotee is becoming possessive about the possessions. Becoming possessive about the positions. So somebody that has to be a great position, Krishna will make him fall to a lower position so that he surrenders to Krishna. Because 
positions and possessions are temporary. We may use them in Krishna's service. If you get attached to them, Krishna will take them away so that we surrender to him. Does it answer your question? Yes, Prabhuji, but my uh, question was also around, um, like in our day-to-day -day lives, we see there are so many distractions which come in the way, which stop us from progressing in bhakti. So how do we understand that? Like, why do we not see this day-to-day? -day? That Krishna is taking away whatever is one day to do for bhakti. Oh, so when obstacles are coming, the expectation is Krishna should take away these obstacles, right? Why is not he taking care of it? Is that the question? Yes. Or a new question? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The answer to this question is Krishna is giving obstacles to intensify our dependence on him. When the life is very smooth, uh, no problems, this devotee is not remembering me sufficiently. Let's place some obstacle in his life so that he is more dependent on me, he will remember me more, he will intensify his absorption in me. That's the So whatever is favorable to Bhakti, he will give, right? Sometimes an obstacle can be favorable to Bhakti. When Kunti Maharaj is praying, Vipadaha Santu Taha Shashtra Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhava Tava Darshana Vyasya Rapunar Bhava Darshana Give me more and more difficulties and you are reaching the same. So sometimes difficulty, uh, calamity can be an opportunity to intensify our dependence on Krishna. And we should also see in a different way that uh, when we get a difficulty in life, that could also be a product of our own misdeeds in the past. And that's how devotee looks at it. So Krishna has done so many mistakes in the past. Thank you for purifying me by giving this difficulty in my life, by giving this reversal. So three types of people suffer. Conditioned souls suffer because of their karma. Practicing devotees, who are practicing devotional service, who are chanting the Sari Krishna Mahamantra, Chitra, Chedraika Mantram, Sakala Upanishad, Vakya Puja Mantram, they are chanting all that, still they suffer. Why? Because they are purification. They may have some traces of anarthas in the heart. Or they may do aparats, Seva aparat, Vaishnava aparat. D, uh, like uh, Dham Aparat, Nam Aparat, Guru Aparat, so many Aparats are there, right? So because of Aparats or because of Anarthas, devotees are practicing Bhakti also can sometimes suffer. Third, why pure devotees suffer? Practicing devotees suffer so that they become purified. Why pure devotees suffer? Pure devotees suffer not for their purification, for their glorification. Means, when a pure devotee encounters suffering, uh, what does it mean? Uh, it is an opportunity for us to see that this pure devotee is not giving up bhakti despite facing so many reverses. Pandavas never left the lotus feet of Krishna, although they faced so many reverses. So, to, to announce how faithful a devotee is, how dedicated a devotee is to the lotus feet of Krishna. Krishna may sometimes allow your devotees also to encounter some reversals or obstacles in life. Right? One more secret. Whatever I said till now is not secret. It is secret. <laughs> the secret is Krishna secretly experiences some rasa with the devotees by putting them in difficulties. What is this rasa? <laughs> right? So he puts Mother Earth in difficulties. Mother Earth is overburdened with so many. Uh, military forces and demoniac people, Krishna will come as an avatar royally and does some pastimes and relieves Mother Earth from the burden. And she becomes very happy. Her love for Lord is being intensified. So, why the Lord has to allow the demons to flourish and why he has to come and kill them to relieve Mother Earth? Because in that relief, there is some extra experience of it. Uh, to explain it in a more deeper way, you ate uh, Sompapadi, Giridat Sompapadi, <laughs> and you ate Rasgulla, and you also ate uh, Chakrapongal from South Indian, some temple, right? And you ate uh, Rasmalai, you ate Malpuva, you ate this sweet, you ate that sweet. And after that, I will give you my soup bath. Will you be able to relish it? After eating seven sweets, can you relish an eighth sweet? No, right? You ate Mirchi Bajji. <laughs> and you are having Mayanam Daladashi to Dhare. 
Where will give you my surprise? Your friendly should better, right? Similarly, if a devotee's life, there are only happiness, happy moments, uh, it's a little monotonous. If some obstacle comes, if some difficulty comes, and Krishna comes to relieve you from the difficulty, there's an extra experience of rasa. My surprise is it is more tasty of eating mirchi bhaji. But it's not so tasty of eating rasgulla, rasmala, and other and other sweets, right? So therefore, <laughs> there is a <laughs> There, is, there are happy moments in devotee's life, there are some distressful moments also. So that we experience the love of Krishna when he comes to relieve us from the distress. A child is regularly experiencing love of mother, but when the child experiences the extra affection shown by mother when he is sick, his gratitude and his appreciation for mother's love increases. Right? Similarly, when we are in difficulties and Krishna is relieving us from difficulties, our appreciation for Krishna's affection for us will increase. Krishna wants to increase the affection. Drunkards are there, right? Sometimes they, they mix uh, the drink with uh, some some water or soda and then drink. I have no experience, by the way. <laughs> in this lifetime, I don't have experience. I am just giving an example. <laughs> okay. So they mix something and then drink and they get intoxicated. But sometimes they want raw, without any alloy, without any mixture, right? Some they want a deeper intoxicated state. <laughs> okay. Similarly, Krishna is is uh, uh, spiritually he wants to get more and more intoxicated with the devotee's love. So he will purposefully keep the devotees in some difficulty so that their prayerful nature, their dependence on him is more and more intensified. Therefore, we need not hate obstacles. We can embrace obstacles. Okay. So, keeping faith in Krishna. Let's never doubt Krishna's intentions. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. Thank you. Very good. Then, say Thank you. Hare Krishna. You want to hear Prabhuji again, fans? Yeah. <laughs> So, Prabhuji has been giving class after class of yesterday, continuously minimum 8 hours before. Yesterday also, and today also, 8 hours before. Morning, at the age is there, the Raksha Yoga, Bhakti Yoga class, and then now. Can you imagine 8 hours continuously? I asked Prabhuji, are you not tired? Are you not this one? Prabhuji is my favor. Look at the, you know, Prabhuji is you now humble serving and love for Krishna. Yes? Before I was meeting, I was telling him, please don't miss Prabhupada's class. It is condensed and nectar will be flowing. Please don't miss. This is what I was requesting. Do you all feel it is condensed nectar? Yes! Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. No, uh, spiritually nourishing us, Prabhupada, for no lively example and so many other shlokas. In fact, by reciting the shlokas, we also fell in love and we should also recite and relish the shlokas. Thank you so much, Prabhupada. Let's all thank Prabhuji by standing Hare Krishna Mahamantra one time very loudly. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! 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 Hare Hare! 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 Hare
Right? And then after that, we have Ram Nami celebration next week. So please don't miss all these celebrations. Take full spiritual charge. Yes? Thank you so much. So now we'll have a open call. In the opening, after take darshan, then as usual, one of us shall be going.